A few days ago, the Dodge CEO confirmed the current version of the Dodge Challenger and Charger will continue past 2024 with a V8 engine. Now, I know a lot of people read into the articles about this and felt a sigh of relief that you'd be able to get a Hellcat in 2025 and 2026, but what if I told you that's not entirely accurate? That the Hellcat still will be gone in 2024, but Dodge will only offer the 5.7 and 392 out of fear of a massive EV flop. So I'm going over why the Hellcat won't return, the three mystery variants coming, confirmation of the second gen car was never getting the V8 in the first place and why your wallet's about to get very light. So let's get into the stuff. First, let's go over exactly what the Dacio has said and then I break it down why this is sad news confirming a lot of rumors. Now he says the new platform is coming in 2024. The new car comes in 2024. We didn't say that the current cars are gonna die in 2024. There may be some overlap, but you're not going to have years and years and years of the classics and a new one at the same time. When we announced the Viper was going away and we announced the ACR at the same time, it was the best and highest price point Viper sales ever. That was a run on Vipers. When you make a big change, there's going to be people that just aren't going to follow you, at least not initially. But all those people will return eventually when they see that we're serious and we're going to be dodged first. Now let's break this down into sections. Yes, we know the new platform and car is coming in 2024. And no, Dodge did not directly say that the current car was gonna die in 2024. Now all of a sudden, they're gonna keep making the current cars because for two months, they've been sneaking around the forums, the Facebook groups since EV day, and they see a majority of people aren't receptive to an EV Dodge at the cost of the V8s. So they are stuck between a Celantis and a Biden place. We know for a fact that the current models were gonna switch over in 2024 because that is the agreement they signed with Unifor last year. Now if you don't know what Unifor is, that is the Canadian Union that makes the car at the branch plant and the agreement was to make the gen 1 cars and three variants until the end of production not too long ago there was rumors of production of the challenger and charger being moved to the u.s now at the time it didn't really make sense but now with the statements that the ceo said it all makes perfect sense now dodge is scared that people won't adopt to the gen 2 evs so they're going to sign another agreement with unifor to continue the gen 1 production until 2026 at brampton and while that is happening they will build the gen 2s at another plant in the u.s closer to the engine and battery plants that start popping up in the next couple of years Dodge will follow the same formula that Ram does with the 5th gen 1500 and the 4th gen classic. Make two generations at the same time at two different plants because they are on two different platforms. While Ram is doing this because they don't have a mid-sized truck and single cab for the 5th gen, Dodge will do this out of fear of sales tanking. There is only one reason to make both the 1st gen and 2nd gen challengers and chargers. The 2nd gen was never going to have a V8 option in it, period. If the 2nd gen had a V8, what is the point of continuing to make a car ride on a platform that's well over 20 years old with ties to Mercedes? Making both generations of the Challenger and Charger at the same time confirms rumors of using the inline six turbocharged engine to replace the 57392 in the Hellcat. And remember I said earlier that we will see the V8 until 2026. If we look at the CEO's statement, we won't see the classic years and years and years with the new car at the same time. That essentially means two years extended will be 2026. Funny how he calls the Gen 1's classics just how I have Ram does the fourth gen, just saying. So the 57 and 392 are safe until 2026, but what about the Hellcat? In January, the same Dodge CEO specifically said that the days of an iron block supercharged 6.2 liter V8 are numbered. He specifically referenced the Hellcat, not the 392, not the 57. The Durango Hellcat was a one year run only because it couldn't meet the new EVAT requirements coming in 2022, which also softly confirms why you'll never see a Hellcat powered track haul again, that they didn't give the same fanfare that they did the Durango Hellcat. What's interesting to me is that the TRS can still be had and it meets the new EVAT requirements. From my understanding, large pickup trucks and SUVs, they both follow the same emission standards. If the TRS can pass, why can't the Durango and the Trackhawk? So we already have an elimination of models that support the Hellcat. Now I've heard multiple sources and people comment here and there on videos that the Hellcat motor will be gone and also that the line that makes the engine will be converted to making the inline six turbocharged engine and the inline four version as well. In 2024, there is gonna be another aggressive reduction in emissions, which is why you see this full sprint by Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Solantis to have all these EVs out by 2024. And that is why Dodge came out on the record and specifically called it a Hellcat platform, because they know it's just not gonna work with that motor. And that's just up this question, 
How many companies come out four years before a car ends production and say that this engine's days are numbered? That's like Chevy come out saying for the C8 last year that hey, the LT2 engine is in this car, days are numbered. But we know that they're gonna make a Z06 version with that engine. And we know that they'll come out with a Z0, uh, not a Z0, but a Zora version of that car around 2024. The Hellcat engine is old, it's dirty polluting, and instead of improving it, the company is going the European route of giving a small displacement engines. Look at it like this. The Hellcat started popping up in the streets in 2014. That would be 10 full years of the same engine in 2024. In 10 years, the other manufacturers have developed new V8s and are still popping them out. And Dodge is still playing around with the same Hellcat motor since 2024. Now, I know some people are going to say, well, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But imagine if you still had your iPhone 6 from 2014 and Apple tweaks it every year and still charges you a premium for it 10 years later. Just saying. And this is where your wallet will hurt. The CEO specifically told us exactly what's going to happen with his Viper example. They will announce Hellcats are going away and announce a high price point final edition, just like the Viper ACR. I love how they keep talking about the Viper every chance to get. How many company goes on a record about a discontinued car that they're allegedly not working on? Now here's a big problem for this high price point final edition, right? Dodge neutered a super stock challenger at 807 horsepower and won't let these owners get demon parts because they promised to never do another car like the demon. Dodge painted themselves into a corner because on one hand they want to make a high dollar final edition and then on the other hand they can't make it better than a 2018 Dodge Demon on the drag strip. Now reports were out that Dodge will make three variants before Uniforce contract is up in 2024 and now we have a pretty good idea of what they will be now. I called it a few months ago, but we now know that two of those variants will be final edition. One for the Charger, the other for the Challenger. Now the third variant, it'll probably just most likely be just a Charger Superstock. All they gotta do is throw in a Superstock engine, some sticky tires, some Demon Tech, and bam, there you go, a Charger Superstock. Now I wish it would be like a Charger Demon, but Dodge said it wouldn't happen. Now, if I was a Dodge CEO, you would've loved me because I would've had, in 2018, the Challenger Demon. In 2020, I would've had the Charger Demon. 2022, I would've had the Durango Demon. And in 2023, I would've did like a Dodge Challenger ACR. And in 2024, I would've done like a Charger Hellcat ACR. I'll give you all the drag cars first, and I'll give you all the track cars second. Now these final edition Challenger and Chargers, I'm gonna take like a wild guess and say there's probably gonna be like a limited run of red eyes with an 807 horsepower super stock motor, some aero improvements, maybe like a splitter, some uh, fender vents, whatever, and a big wing to increase downforce. Basically creating an ACR that Dodge said they couldn't do last year, but there is a car out there right now that proves them wrong that a Challenger can be an actual road course car if you look at the Pikes Peak Challenger. Pricing, honestly, it doesn't matter how much these vehicles cost because we all know at the end of the day, the dealers are gonna jack the prices up on these cars because they know these right here will be the last V8s that ever touch a Challenger and a Charger. If you look at the TRX right now, dealers are charging 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars on top of that truck and it was even limited. I can only imagine how much dealers are gonna try to charge on a Challenger and Charger knowing for a fact that you will never be able to get a supercharged V8 engine in it. Now the MSRP, it'll probably be a little bit higher than a super stock. Super stock around like 82, 83 K. So maybe we'll see around 84, 85, but we all know that you probably gonna be able to add like maybe like a track pack or whatever for the big wing. You probably easily better option this car probably around something like a 90 to hundred thousand dollars. And then whatever these dealers try to jack up on the price. Because like what the Dodge CEO said, once they announce the Hellcats are leaving and they announce these final edition versions, it's gonna be a straight cash grab. They're gonna try to run out and get the highest amount of sales they can get out of these cars. Now, if these final editions won't pass emissions in 2024, then most likely we will see them pop up for 2023 model year. And if that's the case, we should have an announcement within the next several months of these final edition cars. Order banks for the 2022 model year are not open up yet. So hopefully for the next couple of months before that opens, Dodge will announce some kind of new variant for the Charger. Maybe it'll be a super stock that could be one variant. And then these two final editions will make up the three variants that we know that they're going to do based off of the contract with Unifor. Now, interesting thing to note is we have not seen any Challenger and Chargers running around with any emissions equipment attached to it. So that's why I don't see an increase in horsepower past 807 horsepower that's in the Superstock. And as far as trademarks to call these variants, Dodge could have used the Angel, but they let it go. It would have been awesome for people to have the ability to have a Demon and an Angel variant of the Challenger. Now, they also have Cuda, but I believe that's going to be associated with the Gem 2 cars as a replacement to the Hellcat trims. I don't believe they'll use the Tomahawk trademark. I think that name is going to be saved for a Viper replacement if they're even allowed to use it in the first place. Hopefully in the next few months, we'll see a new name trademark and a Challenger running around with a big wing and manufacturer plates. It just doesn't make sense for the final edition to be yet another drag spec car. Dodge already said no to another demon. They kept the promise with the Superstock. So where else can Dodge go when they're stuck between a Superstock and a demon place? 
And that's it for this video, guys. Yes, we'll get V8s until 2026, but the Hellcats will be leaving before then in a high dollar fashion. Dodge will overcharge for them. Dealers will hold them hostage until you agree to their demands. But what do you guys think? Will this be yet another drag spec challenger and charger that's destined for its final run? Should Dodge copy the ACR and give us a race car while it won't be a world beater on the track, it will be an awesome car on the street. If you think of their new motto, they say tear up the streets, not the planet. Just saying. So do a butter a favor and leave me a thumbs up in this video to help support the channel. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button, help me on my March towards 10th K subscribers. And until the next video, I'm out.